guys welcome back to our channel here on YouTube it is truly wonderful to see all of you here today in this episode we will learn about the transcontinental railroad that spans America from the East Coast to the West Coast this was no easy job as this railroad spanned thousands of miles through some of the toughest areas of the United States including cruising the Great Divide of the Rocky Mountains. Join us now as we look back in history and see just how hard it was. You got your popcorn cuz here we go guys. In the 1860s, America is divided by civil war and 2,000 miles of untamed land west of the Mississippi. At this time, it was way easier to travel to Europe from the east coast of the U.S. than to get to California. But one man has an audacious dream to connect the country. America needs a transcontinental railroad. It's a daunting engineering challenge. This was one of the biggest accomplishments in world history. Literally moving mountains to finally connect the coasts. This is the race to build the Transcontinental Railroad. To make life better for people. The notion of building a Transcontinental Railroad in the 1860s is almost fantastic to think about because nothing of that size had ever been even attempted before, and so it was like a moonshot. You have railroad companies struggling to cross something like the Allegheny Mountains, and he says, let's cross the entire continent. You're talking about 2,000 miles of rail. This would be like someone today in our environment saying, you know what we should do? We should colonize Mars now. Let's do that. Judah convinces four Sacramento businessmen to invest in his impossible dream led by millionaire merchants Charles Crocker and Leland Stanford, who will go on to found Stanford University. They form the Central Pacific Railroad. They're known as the Big Four. To put Judah's ambitious plan into action, they need to convince Congress to award them the largest government contract in history. Luckily for them, Washington is about to realize the true power of the railway. In July of 1861, three months after war is declared, the first major battle of the Civil War is underway. A quick win for the North could end it all. But when 11,000 Confederate reinforcements arrive by train, Lincoln is handed an embarrassing loss and a protracted war becomes inevitable. The Transcontinental Railroad becomes critical for reaching Western states during the expansion and ensuring that those territories don't secede to the Confederate side. Three months later, Lincoln signs the Pacific Railroad Act, authorizing the building of a transcontinental railroad. And Judah and the Central Pacific are hired to make it happen. But there's a catch. He's here. Your persistence paid off. We have half the job. Lincoln chartered a second company. The Union Pacific Railroad. They'll build from east to west, and we'll build from west to east. The act is intended to create competition, laying out incentives for Judah's Central Pacific and his counterpart, Thomas Durant, to lay as much track as they can. The way that Congress has legislated the creation of the Transcontinental Railroad, any mile that the Central Pacific lays or the Union Pacific lays is going to mean a windfall of mineral rights for future mining and so forth, as well as just flat out cash, US bonds, the payout is $16,000 for every mile. 
three times that over rough terrain. Between 250 and 800,000 per mile today. With no designated meeting point, the faster each company works, the more they take from their competitor. And in the government wants us to finalize a meeting point with Central Pacific. There is no way they could beat our mileage at this point. So it shouldn't matter where we end. That's not the point. I prefer to keep making money. The profits are so tempting that as both railroads reach Utah, they each lay track beds that extend past their rival's track by more than 100 miles. By January 1869, the Central Pacific and the Union Pacific have graded well past each other. Both are trying to seize as much land as they possibly can, both asserting that they are the ones laying the real train. So you'll never miss our next and more and more rail fed adventures. Once again, this is Megan Gallego with Starbright Productions. Bye bye for now, everyone. Mwah.